one. Um, I hope after the wine we still have some concentration <laughs> and um, the presentation will <laughs> be interesting enough to focus. <laughs> um, and I would like to um, take this opportunity to um, thank the uh, organization for the opportunity to be here and for the welcoming quality. It's been uh, a wonderful experience. Thank you. So, um, my paper is a result of uh, an ac uh, academic exercises that I did during uh, special management courses. Um, uh, for the for the PhD degree that I'm pursuing right now, um, and I'm going to talk about Luanda, which is my hometown and the capital of Angola. Can you please speak? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. We can just sign myself. Okay, so um, for those uh, of you that uh, don't know, Angola is in the sub-Saharan part of the African continent. So this is Angola, and um, it's on the Atlantic Ocean uh, uh, coast of the African continent. And Luanda is the point that you see there, and it's the, the, the most dense city of the country. Out of the more than 25 million uh, people uh, in Angola, uh, about um, 7 million live in Luanda. So, and it's the smallest city of the country as well. So you can just have the idea of how dense Luanda is. Uh, however, um, in terms of the formal urban fabric, and, and the informal settlement, uh, more than 60% of the population of Rwanda live in informal settlement, and the, the urban fabric is actually just about 40%. So, uh, although we have this, this uh, massive density, it's not really occupied in the formal uh, fabric of, of, of the city. So, um, it's, it's easy to have this idea of the of cities in the sub-Saharan continent to be places of uh, infrastructural deficiency, uh, urban poverty, and, 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 and just lack of, of, of um, quality of living. Um, and during my uh, research, I've come across this um, a study from the uh, uh, American Psychology Association that talked about um, how the people that surround you is around your head. And if you if you think about that, uh, a lot of this, um, the uh, majority of the population live in, in the, the, the degraded areas. So the, the, the imagery that the, most of the population has is a, a context of deficiency, a context of poverty. So my, my point is that beside that, Luanda has another side, and this is the, the formal urban fabric, and this is Luanda Bay, uh, the revitalized um, uh, project, uh, 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 the, the bigger um, uh, public space that we have, and it has been revitalized um, in the past 10 years. Um, but it's not really used by the majority of the population, in in in, in a way, because um, it's been uh, semi-privatized and it's not really accessible for um, the the lower substructs of of the of the society. But it's also linked to other aspects of accessibility and uh, the 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 um, activities that are available in the space uh, that the majority of the population would look for. Um, so, uh, this project has been iconic in the revitalization of Rwanda uh, because the first uh, proposals were 
based on uh, artificial islands, uh, simulate mimicking the artificial islands of uh, Dubai. And when the project came to public to be uh, approved, there was a lot of conversation from the community and from uh, society and architects even. And uh, government was uh, forced to, to change and to preserve some of the historical uh, uh, um, context of, of, the, of the surrounding. And the, the artificial islands were not built in the end, uh, and the, the final projects resembled more what the community would want to have rather than the mimicking of uh, other um, uh, projects that we, we, we have seen in Dubai and Singapore and, and overseas in general. Um, and this is an image of the, 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 the musicals that we have, the shows that we have. This was before COVID. And it's just an idea that um, if you have the right activities, if you have the right programs, you can actually have um, poor and, and, and the haves and have nots of the community using the space. So the space is not being used, not because it's not accessible or not because you know people can't go there. It's, it's the program that the place uh, offers doesn't attract people. And there's this semi-private component to it that is also not um, open to spontaneous occupation. But then uh, when the right program is in place, then you see a, a lot of uh, people um, you know, uh, interacting and, and, and in the same place. So my point is that uh, the, the, the uh, question that I have in my research is, is, is it possible that public spaces can be the uh, catalytic tools to revitalize the, the, the city center of Rwanda? Um, the other issue that we have is that with urban uh, sprawl, the city center became this place to work and place and the place for um, the majority of the governmental institutions and uh, people live in gated communities in the suburbs. So it's it's very alive during office hours and it's very bad uh, after office hours and during weekends. People go to the beach but they don't really inhabit public spaces in the city centre. So my hypothesis is: is it possible for this uh, for the public spaces in the city centre to be alive again, and uh, what is it that uh, is, is needed for this, for what programs, what uh, characteristics these places have to have, so that people will go there and and, and um, make the spaces alive. So I, I went into some uh, uh, theoretical. Um, uh, research about um, the different stages of urban redevelop redevelopment. And um, I came across this uh, paper from Naomi Carmen that actually uh, synthesizes very well um, the different stages of urban redevelopment in the Western culture. And, 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 and she, 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 calls that, she calls it the three generations of the urban development. And um, there's the physical determinism that has to do with the, the complete obliteration of uh, slums um, and this beautification of the city. And then with the sprawl, um, there was this need to create social services. So it was more social service uh, or, or oriented to the communities that were now uh, away from the city center. And then the latest uh, approach that she, she mentions uh, is related to the ne neoliberalist approach where the, the, there is a disinvestment from the state in the intervention in public spaces and it's more private sector driven but the, the scale of the intervention has been decreasing and there's, there's, there's been a lot of gentrification challenges uh, during these interventions but what, what, I, what I get from here is that um, these changes have happened uh, with, with changes in the, in the policy of these countries. And what is happening in, in the context of Angola, for instance, is that we have the three um, uh, categories happening at the same time. Uh, it all depends on, the, on, on who is promoting and the money that is available, uh, the geography where, where they happen. Um, but then there's really no attention to the left out spaces that we end up calling uh, public spaces. So, um, 
public life and livable spaces need to have an intention towards them. And they, they don't just happen spontaneously just because you have beautiful buildings and, and good infrastructure. And that's actually what happened in the in the Luanda Bay. So it's a, it's a beautiful space and we improve the infrastructure, but it's not a livable space at the moment. So then I learned this um, re urban redevelopment uh, 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 historical uh, trajectory to, to the livability uh, of, of public spaces. And then names like Jane Jacobs and William White, um, Jan Gale came, came up, um, giving some uh, main characteristics to uh, livable spaces like walkability, diversity of land use, safety, accessibility and visual appeal. Um, and, and, and then how this characteristics can have positive outcomes in the in the fabric where they, they actually um, are present, which is the improved health of the community with people use public spaces more, they, they walk more, so they, they, they have less um, obesity and other uh, health uh, health conditions linked to um, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, car dependency kind of urban living um, condition. And then uh, there's also promotion of the microeconomy, uh, the increased sense of belonging because you, then you, you use the space more, you, you connect with the, with the space more. And there's also the sense of belonging and, and the, the improved uh, touristic um, uh, activity both internally and internationally. Um, and, and I think it's interesting because in the context of Angola, where we have such a large uh, number, uh, l such large density of, of informal land, uh, the microeconomy is actually quite important to, to, to us. And it's, it's part of the cultural component of Luanda. The, the city center, what we call now the city center, and it's coincidentally the historical center, uh, has developed around commercial activity. So what you see here, this woman walking around, uh, and we call it Zongelas, they've been there since the, the 1500s. So it's, it's, a, it's a cultural thing that we, we, we're now trying to fight it. If you see this woman here, they're not sitting and they, they're standing because they know that if the police is coming, they have to pick up the buckets and, and run away. Otherwise, the police will just get the, the goods and, and you know they, they lose their business and they live on a daily basis. So um, there's, there's also this pop-up um, uh, strategy that are now coming into play where this is the normal street and then um, they, they're now creating the, the, the close up of the streets and, and this uh, musical um, pop up activities. And, and, and I think that um, these are some indications that th those places can be alive if we have the right strategy, but they, they can't just be um, erratic, spontaneous. They, I think they can be programmed and the spaces can actually have a continuous or at least more frequent life in them. So now um, I came to space syntax uh, during the, the, the um, space analysis course that I was telling you. And uh, during the exercise, I found out that there, there is this tool that can help me in this uh, search of the, 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 the right combination of characteristics and the program that um, uh, can help me identify the potential uh, locations to actually look for uh, public spaces in them and, and, and then um, take the advantage of the, of, the, of the tool to go directly to those spaces and, and potentialize them. So if you look at the, at the um, space impact map here, and you see, this is this this is the uh, choice um, uh, analysis. What you see as the the more uh, warm colors, um, and, and and I know space impacts has more to do with the pedestrian movement. But in the case of Rwanda, this is actually where you found uh, where where you find more uh, traffic jams and not really a presence of of people in the street. But it's it's still interesting to me to know that these are the places that have the potential to, 
to, to, to have uh, life, uh, uh, lively pu public spaces. So um, in, in, in terms of, of the space syntax, um, I found that the, the, the tool has the advantage of the visualization of uh, uh, pedestrian movement at a given site, at least potentially. Um, it gives also the, 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 the possibility of simulation and the anticipation of po possible intervention outcomes uh, in the use of the space. Um, uh, it's also value, valuable to establish real estate investments. There are studies that correlate um, the, 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 um, the, the areas with, with, with most, uh, with higher levels of, of choice and integration with potential for uh, 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 high returns of investment in terms of real estate. It's also, uh, and in my point of view, it's not a substitute for community participation, it's not a substitute for uh, uh, direct observation, but it, it can help to explain the, the potential and the shortcomings of, of a site. Um, and, and, and convince with potential investors, now that we're talking about this, this neoliberalist uh, approach, potential investors to invest in, in, in certain public spaces with, with uh, an evidence uh, of, of what is happening in the place and what the potential of the place is. Um, and and, and uh, from an from a urban design uh, uh, point of view, it's also, um, it, it also helps you to understand the site at a broader scale, and, and, and it, it saves you some time to actually go through every corner and every street and understand what is going there. And, and I don't think that even then you will have the picture that space impacts that leaves you uh, in, 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 in that in those interpretations. So the first exercise was to locate some amenities in terms of the potentials of the street of the, of the uh, choice and integration analysis. Um, and those were uh, elementary schools, restaurants, and uh, hospitals, and, and laundry shops. So um, the locations here had to do um, not only with places with high uh, uh, values and warmer colors, but also in relation to um, uh, places that are more secluded and, and more and safer for, for children, for instance, in the term, in, in the sense of elementary school, um, and, and restaurants close to places where there, there would be more pedestrians in, in on the streets. And it, uh, in the case of the laundry shop, it it's, it, it, it works both ways, uh, both in a in a more um, uh, residential context and also closer to services. So when we look at this um, at this uh, analysis. This this road here that that you have it's a Milkar Cabral. This is this is now the road that connects the uh, inside of the of the of the town to the bay. Okay, and and the square that you see here, um, it's actually this this road has the a, a lot of the uh, many of the um, governmental uh, important governmental institutions like the National Bank. The, the Ministry of, 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 of Works and, and Town Planning. We have Sonangol, which is the, the, the most important oil company of the country, um, but it's all car oriented. So it was interesting to see that, you know, that is actually um, uh, an important street, but it's not feasible to locate a lot of services um, on them because we have a problem with um, parking in the center of the, of the street. So um, it, the logic is not only about uh, taking advantage of the, the potential that the analysis give, give us, but also to take into consideration what the, the actual uh, um, characteristics of the site are. And, 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 and then uh, the hospital, for instance, is not really uh, in the center because of the, uh, of the parking and accessibility issues that we have there. And it's a bit outside of the, of the, of, of the perimeter, but still easily accessible um, by, by, by car or, and, and even uh, by foot. In the second exercise, there was the simulation um, um, about celebrating the, 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 the center of the city, which is the square that I was telling you about um, between uh, Amilcar Cabral and Avenida de Portugal. Um, and so it's 
of Neda de Portugal via and uh, Rua Amilcar Cabral. So that 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 cross day is actually the center of the city. And uh, in the we um, in, in in a way of celebrating that space. Um, there was this proposal to, to, to build a, a, a structure there and interrupt uh, transit. And what happens is when, when you use space syntax and you, and, and you build in the space, it interrupts the, the visibility um, uh, properties of the space and interrupts the connection from the center of the city to the bay, which is, which is not uh, uh, advisable because if you see in the in the non um, uh, in the original uh, site the uh, of in on the original analysis this is actually the the strongest connection from the city center to the bay so um, it, it's it's good to to have a tool that gives you that kind of information but it's also uh, good to know that if you pedestrianize that space uh, you still have the connection. Um, and, and, and you, you, you'll still be able to celebrate the space, uh, but you won't, um, uh, you won't interrupt the, you know, the, the visible uh, um, aspects of, of the site in terms of uh, connectivity and, and the fluidity of, of pedestrian movement uh, of the site. So um, in terms of the, the outcomes for this exercise, um, I think uh, it, it was it was good for me to understand that um, there's only really one one strong connection from the city centre to the bay, and that's probably also a reason why the bay is not so uh, active um, in a way. Um, but also from the user's perspective, besides the, the, the synthetic analysis. Um, I think there's, there's now uh, a possibility to use this, this analysis to increase the, the, the connection with public transport routes uh, uh, and, and understand um, the, the uh, well from, from the analysis of, of, the, of the project, there was this specific gentrification uh, because the, 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 the uh, amenities that are, were placed in the, in the, in the site with the targeted a wealthier clientele. But I still believe that because there's enough space left out, there's still, there's still a possibility to introduce other activities that could uh, promote more social inclusivity in the space and, and in turn in other public spaces in, in, in the city. Um, the weak diversity of, of the, the, the um, visitation uh, rates uh, of, of, the, of the Bay were also justified in a way and understood in a way by, by the analysis. Um, and the, 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 uh, the simulation was able to explain that pedestrianizing the, 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 the square um, was probably the best solution rather than uh, building up uh, the, uh, uh, the center of the square by simulation. So um, this is not a deep learning of facing tax, I understand, but from, from my context, it's important to know that um, we have uh, um, a very uh, um, challenging social, uh, um, uh, social problems to solve and, 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 and to have different tools, access to different tools to, to be able to understand the, the, the sites and to, 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 to um, uh, create simulations, um, it, it helps us to do the, the leapfrog um, steps that we need to improve our um, urban fabric and to create more inclusive, inclusive spaces um, and also to, to be able to do comparative uh, studies between uh, cities within the African context and also uh, cities outside the African context which in, in the literature review that I've been, uh, uh, I, I, have, I have done, they, they are not, they, they, like this, there's a, uh, there's a dearth in, 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 in uh, evidence in the literature that supports that, that kind of, of, of studies. And I think that that could be a good contribution. And that's it for me, thank you.
presentation, local spatial analysis for two exhibitions in Mexico. Okay.